FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's July 6th, 2017. A first off, questions, comments, anything else? We always answer all. Just write us an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. So is this the end of the tech fantasy, the tech bubble? Well, person you're about to hear from believes it very well could be, and that is good news for gold and perhaps silver as well. Talking about Ned Schmidt, who runs the Value View Gold Report and the AgriFood Value View. Ned, how are you? I'm fine, Kerry. How about you today? All good, all good. So, so what's going on here, Ned? Uh, you, uh, you're like uh, bullish on all the wrong things. You should be bullish on cryptocurrencies <laughs> and Bitcoin and, uh, <laughs> no. and Apple, right? No, no, no cryptocurrencies. Yeah, cryptos. There, that's where the money's at, right? You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's where the money's at in cryptocurrencies. That's where the money's being lost. <laughs> you know, the the whole argument for these things, Kerry, is fallacious. What the argument is that, for example, bitcoins. There'll only be so much, so many bitcoins in this world, and the creation of them is limited. Well. Perhaps, but what is not limited is the creation of cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Anybody can create one. This is from a June 4th article of CNBC. Now, we know that their opinions are idiocy, but I'm assuming <laughs> that they report facts. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is spelled sound, sounds like storage. It's S T O R J, which is a cryptocurrency has 34 million in coins outstanding, making it the 53rd most valuable cryptocurrencies. There's 53 of these things at least out there. (laughs) I don't think these people understand that. Anybody can create a cryptocurrency. Now, if you pull up the one-year chart on Bitcoins, you will see what is called a parabolic curve. Yes, I know. Parabolic curve is when the price accelerates. Correct. When you throw a ball up in the air, it starts to decelerate before it falls. In a Mm -hmm. parabolic curve, the ball accelerates. So we know that's unnatural. You gotta look at that curve. We know two things about the parabolic curve. One is they always fail in a painful manner. You're talking about a 50% correction from the high, but we never know when. We don't know when it's going to happen. So if you look at that picture of Bitcoins, you're looking at a failure pass pattern of massive proportions. Well, so everybody now is running over. It's the one that begins with an E that I can't pronounce, Gary. Can you? Ethereum. Ether? Ethereum. Yes. Okay. Ethereum. Correct. Yeah. Take pull a one-year curve up of that and and match it up against the one-year curve for the Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just, it's in formation. You just don't know when it's going to quit. Correct. And I I think these people are going to lose so much money. I don't know what the, how they'll recover. But I think that has drawn money from the silver market. Mm -hmm. The silver market is the, the, the regular guys effectively play. Right. And I think that is what's pushed it down to $16 for the third time. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that's interesting about silver is normally it's connected very closely to gold. I I run an R squared on silver on gold. And the R squared explains how much the wiggles in silver are explained by the wiggles in gold. It's it's no great measure, but... Mm. Normally, that run is very high, 80, 90 percent. Mm-hmm. And it's down now about 10 percent, which it only does during periods of depressed silver. Last time it did this, silver was $14. So I think it's saying that silver is just disconnected because of that. And as such, it's, it's got great opportunity. Mm-hmm. On gold, I mean, we start with the reality that the price of gold to the S and P 500 is is a, is at a ridiculous low. I mean, we have rarely in history seen gold this cheap to the stock market. It's come down. It 
touched just below the 200-day moving average. This is the third time. Each time before, it has rallied to a new interrupt period high. You want to figure out some name to call it. Yeah. But I think what's going to drive it is gold. Is pe- some people buy to ensure their portfolio and certainly and balance. And I think the problems the Nasdaq 100 is having. It, it's it's there's a problem in La La Land, and Houston cannot fix this one, guys. Mm-hmm. And I want to go back. First of all, we've had four interest rate hikes. The Nasdaq 100 should not be up. Every gross sector gets butchered with rate increases happen. It's happened every time, or we'd still be t- trading Tampax and Polaroid. Yeah. And and I want to talk about the three trading days last week. On Tuesday, we had the announcement that Google had finally been fined for its misbehavior. That was a catalyst. In and of itself, it doesn't mean anything. But it drove the NASDAQ down. They rallied it on Wednesday with the bank stock, bank stress reports. On Thursday, the problem showed up again. These funds are up to their eyeballs in these internet technology fantasies. What they found out on Thursday, there are no buyers. They tried to sell some on Thursday, and literally there were no buyers left. Everybody that owns this junk owns it. Mm -hmm. And so it's at at a little, NASDAQ 100 is at 5,600. And there's a little congestion there, but it's meaningless. The next support's not till 5,400. Mm. So I think as the NASDAQ crumbles, and it will, people are going to move, spread their money out. And one of those beneficiaries should be precious metal, gold and silver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting <laughs> so to I, see. I, yeah. And it's summer doldrums right now. That's part of the reason they're down. People are doing other things. But I think this, if you have not yet, added your gold and silver portfolios, you needed to be doing it now, not waiting for it to be 1300 again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're correct. So, uh, but the agricultural scene there, I mean, that stuff's hitting new highs. It's it's amazing what's going on there, which you, you said for a long time was going to happen. Well, we've got a full-blown bull market in agricultural commodities. Uh, my agri-food price index, which has, now it has 19 since we added ethanol, mm-hmm. an all-time high. It's up 40% from the October lows. The average commodity is up 40% from its uh, 52-week lows. And some of them are just outrageous. Uh, eggs are up 140%. Uh, pork, pork is a screamer. Pork is the hottest meat in the world up 100% from its low. Wow. And even, even sorghum, which nobody has even talked about in over a year. I mean, it only trades on odd number Mondays in Australia. <laughs> hit a 52-week high. Hey, what and, is sorghum exactly? Tell us, what do you do with sorghum? Sorghum is, is like uh, corn. It's the same uses. Mm-hmm. Ca- cattle feed. They use it for cattle feed. Oh. And hog feed. Mm-hmm. And it's grown... Places the biggest producers of sorghum are like Nigeria and those countries. The other big place is in the United States, kind of like uh, Amarillo, Texas, north, north and south of Amarillo, Texas. There's nothing else to do there, yeah. so I guess that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's but there's really no reason to go to Amarillo, Texas. <laughs> yeah, well, we know that. And and consumers are are changing their habits. Uh, U.S. consumers, the two hottest foods right now are ribeye steaks and butter. People are tired of low-fat, tasteless food, and they want fat and taste. Amen to that. And, and one thing that's going to kick it in is this, in June, Trump uh, negotiated a new deal on U.S. beef. We haven't exported beef to China in 14 years. Yeah. And last June, we flew the, they flew it. The first deliveries to China. This is going to be a big market for U.S. producers because one of the requirements is that the food have verification, beef have verification of where it was born and where it lived. And that is going to be on the packages in China. The Chinese consumers want to know where their beef came from. And and so it's going to be slow, Mm -hmm. but I think the U.S. 
these producers are going to be do good. Now, in any bull market, you have new leadership. Like this time in agriculture, we had animal proteins, beef, pork, and chicken. That will rotate into the grains. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see the rotation in the grains. And I wouldn't be surprised that corn turns out to be a stellar performer over the next six months. Right. The problem we got as investors is this stock market, one of the brokerage firms said that 90% of right now is computer driven. That has driven stocks like deer and ag go to probably levels that are unsustainable. Mm. There's three, though, that investors can look at. Agrium, A-G-U, which is getting ready to merge with POT, P-O-T. And I like the company after the merger because I like Agrium. Agrium has the biggest farm retail store operation. And what they do, that retail farm operation, allows them to add value to what is pure commodities. So they should do better. The other two are BG and ADM. And now they've been, they've been selling those off. And this summer sometime is going to be the time to buy those two stocks because they are the only two public companies involved in global grain movement. There are four companies, ADM, BG, Cargill, and Louis Dreyfus. But Louis Dreyfus and Cargill are private companies. Correct. So there's only two of them out there. <laughs> there's another one coming sometime this year when we get the DuPont Dow merger. They will merge and they're going to spin off their agricultural sector company. And now we've lost uh, Syngenta and we're getting ready to lose Monsanto. So that stock is going to be in demand because we're going to lose two and only gain one. We're going to have one less public company in the seed and crop protection business. So that's one investor should watch for it too. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And take a breath. And take a breath. <laughs> hey, that's okay. There was a there was a, a lot a lot to digest there for sure. I don't think you wanted me to faint on your show. <laughs> no, no, we haven't had that yet. You would have been the first. But uh, <laughs> but you know, with what's happening in the markets, it's amazing people aren't getting nosebleeds. You know, the prices are going so high. So with ag, is this partly is this a dollar induced uh, escalation in prices, or is it uh, supply demand? It, it's both. What what happened mm-hmm. a year ago this time is we had wheat crops in Brazil and Argentina because of the weather. And so that allowed the U.S. the U.S. to sell out a lot of inventory. Last year, our grain exports were just smoking hot. Mm. Now we come into the new crop year. We just recently finished putting in the crops. And first of all, the grain traders all think they're weather forecasters. I can assure, <laughs> assure you that they are not. Yeah. We had we had three great years of weather. The probability of good weather this year was about six <laughs> percent. It's like it's like flipping a coin four times and trying to get four heads in a row, and and the weather has just failed. Uh, we have a serious problem in wheat country of drought. Wheat wheat is at record prices, right? And that is also damaged corn crop and held back the soybean crop, mm-hmm. and so. The traders are finally recognizing that they were wrong on the weather. And the crop in the United States this year will not be as big as they thought. At the same time, in Brazil, Brazil has a real problem. Their transportation system is pure garbage. (laughs) And their transportation costs are over a dollar a bushel to get it to the port. That means they're only getting about $2 a bushel at the farm gate. That's below their costs. So they look right now. They are losing money on every bushel of corn and soybeans that they sell. Mm. But, so they're not selling it. So these massive exports we expected from Brazil and Argentina aren't going to happen until prices get materially higher. So it, it's a combination of uh, global demand for food and the weather doesn't follow the script. <laughs> you know, we can, I don't care how many iPhones we have. We had no influence on the weather at all. You sure about that? And I don't. What, what about, yeah. uh, what about the uh, chemtrails and all that stuff? Forget it. <laughs> and for, and, you know, I, I, my last letter, I did a write up. I wrote about 
trading in a stock by the computers because I observed one. Mm. And I'm telling you, if AI is that stupid, the way it trades stocks, we're not going to be safe on the roads, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, well, not, we're not safe now with, with yeah, well, some people on the road. We're in Florida. Forget it. We're like, uh, yeah, we're you, under constant threat. You know that threat. especially where you live. Yeah, we're under constant threat in Florida from uh, errant drivers. But uh, at least software for helping cars navigate the road, navigate the highway is a little more concrete than trying to make money in the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. A <laughs> little bit. A uh, little more you know, definable. And, 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 uh, one thing I wanted to mention, too, Karen, is, you know, gold and silver seem to be totally ignoring what's going on in Korea. Mm. And I'm not saying they should gap up 150 points on Korea, but they're saying nothing is there. Yeah. Very true. You know, we have at least 30 warships cruising in circles in the Sea of Japan. I mean, yeah. they're having a parking problem there right now. <laughs> it only takes one little accident to change the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And accidents do happen. Yeah. Hey, there's a remember the, uh, the Korean uh, missile crisis where uh, one guy, uh, one plane almost caused World War Three, right? Right. And uh, I think people are just people are just too complacent. I think in the investment world, maybe it's because of the abnormal returns of the last couple of years or what. But to say, you know, if you read the, the emotions of the market right now, it's saying there is no problem anywhere of any kind. And the world is never that good. Hey, look at the volatility, the way the volatilities died in stocks and in uh, bonds. I mean, it's madness. Right. And uh, the other thing that's happened, and probably I don't know if any of your visitors have talked about, Karen, is the anybody using emerging market ETFs, there's a good chance Chinese stocks are now going to be in those portfolios. Uh -huh. Because uh, MSCI, the big in index producer, mm -hmm. has added them to their emerging market index. Mm -hmm. well, well, that they're could gonna, be good or bad. They're, try, they're going to do the same thing with the bond indices. Mm -hmm. And one of the one of the holdups, they're going to put Chinese bonds in the bond industry, was there was no electronic trading in, in Chinese government bonds. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a week ago. It'll be two weeks, I think. No, we can go Monday. Uh, they started electronic trading of government bonds in Hong Kong. And I understand from what I've read, the volumes are just tremendous. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So that that's going to help the yuan versus the dollar, mm -hmm. which is going to help gold in dollars. All right. All right. Well, it sounds interesting, Ned, and incisive as always. So don't forget, uh, if you can, uh, if you want to, send an email to kl at kerrylutz.com. We answer all. Uh, check out check out Ned's sites, the Value View Gold Report and the AgriFood Value View. Check out our site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for the newsletter. About to do one now. And while you're at it, uh, check out the Twitter feed, at Kerry Lutz, and the fake book page, Financial Survival. <laughs> Survival Network. Ned, we will catch up with you later. Thanks so much for being on. Hey, it was great to talk to you, Terry. Take care. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.